I think we need to start with the most important story of the day, and that is the Benghazi thing. Um, tonight is yes. Okay, for the record. For the record, um, and tonight is uh, a big, another shoe to fall. I mean, this Benghazi thing is over. It's over now. It's uh, amazing what not only we discovered, but what Judicial Watch released yesterday, which shows that the entire video was concocted by the White House. Uh, the CIA is on record as saying, no, that's not what happened. White House constructed it. And, and now yesterday, and what's amazing is, if I'm not mistaken, the person who wrote the memo that said, we're going for this, for this video, it's not about, don't, don't make it about anything else because it'll look like it's our failed policies. So go after that. Exactly what everyone said, anybody who had any courage, said was the scenario. And it was Rhodes that did it, right? Right. His brother? David, CBS president, CBS News. President of CBS News, isn't that interesting? Oh, and who did they just fire? Or who just left there? Cheryl left. Because they were bearing her stories about? Bearing and flossing, yes. Benghazi. Amazing. Amazing. Just, I just want to remind everyone, think of what Hillary Clinton did. She was on the tarmac with the victims of, of this attack and said to them, we're going to get the person who did this video. As she hugged the father, we're going to get and, and they knew, yeah. And they knew, but think of the stones it takes to do that to that, to that family when you know. But what you see, and for the record tonight, is they were covering up a major, major horrible foreign policy where they had literally switched sides and were now yeah. joining the enemy. Yeah. And no, they knew it. They knew exactly what it was doing. I haven't seen it. Wilson wrote me last night. He said, Glenn, this is, this is why you started the blaze. He said, tonight's episode is why you started the blaze. What the, the, our team did is they started looking and we just kept moving the calendar back and moving it back and pulling the string and finding that, again, yeah, I mean, this... This whole scenario began 18 months at least prior to Benghazi. But you have the goods tonight on the guns too, right? We do. In fact, uh, we, we talked to a um, professional gun runner recognized by the State Department who was responsible for actually setting up the system to get the guns from Qatar into Libya and beyond. Um, That's you know, exactly what we said. Right. Three days right. in, that's exactly what we said. Will the media press the Obama administration on the mission to recover weapons in Libya? I mean, can you imagine a scandal that if it were to come out that Obama supplied the terrorists, our enemies, with weapons to attack and kill our own embassy and ambassador? And what, he'll, what you'll hear tonight is he'll say, they brought me in. He said, I'm a registered you know, uh, arms dealer. And they had me set the whole thing up and then said, OK, good, go away go away, we'll take it from here. And the reason behind that is because he said, everything I do is traceable, everything. He said, so there'd be a paper trail and everything else, which they obviously did not want. He said, so they took my creation and they turned it over to the CIA. And he said, that was the only way, and it's called Operation Zero Footprint. They wanted no footprints. We were all shocked that this was happening and couldn't believe it was happening, and it was after the uh, March 24 intelligence document that was submitted and put forward, and then we watched, in, you know, uh, senior officials playing out their politics agenda on uh, TV, and we were all essentially told to stand down and not not do anything further. I was essentially told to drop it. Yeah, we did an episode. I think it was just a couple of days after, like you said, where you laid out that theory because there were dots to connect. There was the story from the New York Times about the you know the Libyan ship and and all that and. Um, what you connected that day is, is pretty much confirmed exactly by this report tonight. And forget about anybody saying we were right. Nobody's going to report on any of this, are they? You know, the only thing I'm hopeful of is there's so much sort of coming out now. The Judicial Watch papers, um, Fox. Does, does anybody care? You I know, saw Crowdhammer I, yesterday say, you know, this is it. This is it. Yeah. We know proof positive now. They were lying about that. We now have them running guns. 
we now have that piece in. So we know exactly what happened. Exactly. Nobody's going to care. That's Nothing's possible. going to happen. Yeah. That's possible. I guess the, the person who said, what difference does it make, is, is going to run for president. Right. Could we go to um, the, sh uh, the uh, sh shack? Yeah. That was a great thing that you did, I thought. The Instagram. Is that awful? I thought what? that was really awful. What was he thinking? You guys saw that Shaq posted an Instagram with a guy with a facial disorder kind of making fun of him. No, he has, a, he has a disease yeah, he where you lose your hair. I don't think your teeth grow right. It, 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 yeah, and so your face is distorted. Yeah. And so Shaq took a picture of this guy and put, it on, uh, put a tweet and then put his picture next to it going, m mocking this guy. Oh. Mocking him, and then twelve thousand people retweeted it, and other celebrities started sending out mocks of the guy too, taking their picture like that. I couldn't believe it. I saw it yesterday, and so I took a picture of me with the kids with the guy's name on it, saying um, "Hugs, not judgment." Uh, not, hug, hugs, not, not judge. Um, it's his hashtag that he put out because he's like, why do people judge me all the time? And I tweeted, I wonder if there's any retweets on that. I haven't even looked. Did anybody even retweet that? I mean, man. And, and you know what's so ironic? Is Shaq is coming out against the LA Clippers guy. Hey, that's just wrong. Uh, you're a racist. R really is it Shaq? But it's okay for you to mock the handicap, mock people with disease? Oh my gosh. So um, Sterling comes out and bans him from NFL. And Silver did. Silver banned Sterling. NBA for life. For life. Can't even go to a basketball game. Can't even go. Can't even attend an NBA basketball game. Can't have anything to do with his team. He's going to urge the the board to uh, vote to have him sell the team. So they're going to force him to sell the team. Can they do that contractually? Yeah, they can. Three quarters of the owners, if they vote, he has to sell. He has to sell. I mean, it's amazing they can do that, but I I would think that would be uh, contestable in court because I don't see how that holds up with the U.S. Constitution. We should, we, we should stop calling them uh, you know, NBA owners because they're just renters. You're renting under yes. an agreement. You don't own that team. You really don't. Correct. I mean, it is a bizarre way to. You know, mm, something, but you're understand. getting a lot from the NBA. Sure. I mean. So he has to deal under those rules. I mean, I still think he probably does have uh, you know, significant legal recourse to get here. The other part about it is they said that he, it, when they do sell the team, if they do, he has no position in negotiating how much money he gets for it. They do it for him. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, but can I tell you something? Oh, he'll, he'll come out smelling like a rose. Oh, he's gonna make a lot of money. Frank Frank McCord. He paid he paid twelve and a half million. Twelve and a half million for a team that's gonna sell for a billion dollars. Yeah, but still, uh, that's even so. I mean, because their incentive is to make this thing sell for as much as possible, so the other owners get a higher value. So likely it will sell for that much. But in theory, they could sell for whatever they wanted. I mean, he could just he can't do anything about it. Yeah. I mean. Uh, we're at a point where we just, as a society, always react in that way of like, okay, short term, we know we have to do these things, so we just do it. And everyone, they ban them for life, and they ban them. Don't even think about whether it's right or not. Right. Like Nobody even mentions uh, that. It's like the 30th thing you think of. Like yeah. You do all, how does it affect I don't think me? anybody What's had that thought. What's the short term ramifications? What is our bottom line, and how is that going to be affected? And then 90th down the line is, okay, wait a minute, this guy owns this team. He didn't know he was being recorded apparently. Uh, do we take this stuff away from him? Like, wait a minute, he didn't, even, he didn't do this to bring disres disrepute to the, to the NBA. He no, but that's not how the moral turpitude clause. If I come in TV and I'm like, you moving, screw you, Joel, I'm going to tell you what I think. It doesn't mean that I am. Uh, I didn't start out thinking I'm going to bring. You, but if you did it in your shower, would mm -hmm. it be okay? Can we get rid of you then? Yes. According to every moral turpitude clause I have ever signed. You can say, it's for something you say in your shower. Yeah. 
Yes. Anything anything oh. that I do in public or private life that brings disrepute okay. onto the company, yeah. I, I can mean, lose my job. I, 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 I still have that in some well, of my uh, contracts. Here's, here's my question to, to the NBA. I would like to know, if they believe that beating the hell out of a woman I'm, is worse than, than a racist comment. Because I am, if it is... I want to see this reaction every freaking time one of these players punches their wife. Drummed out of the league. I want oh. them out of the league. I want a press conference from for life. I want them I not to be able to go to life. basketball games ever. Ever. Never attend another game. Right. And you know, they'll say, well, the union, we have a collective bargaining agreement, a union. I, that's fine. But everything in your power. Every every moral stance you can take. There is I a more. I can guarantee you. Ban them for life. I can guarantee you, Joel. Any doubt, Joe? Any doubt that the players have a moral turpitude clause? Well, they do. Uh, they yeah, do. They do. Of course they do. Yeah. They never enforce them. The players' union argued in favor of Latrell Sprewell after he choked his coach. Mm -hmm. He choked his coach, and they said, "No, you can't throw him out of the league. You have to pay him his full salary." And that this, these same players, many of them are still around from that era. Same players are sitting out there like arguing that this guy has to. He, you have to force him to sell his team. Uh, it's it's just it is absolutely absurd at this point, and I understand that they can do it, and I will say that he will find a way that they can't do it, and there will be a nice big legal battle. And luckily, we have a legal system that, in theory, is supposed to take the emotion out of these situations. No, right? no, no, justice and, is no longer blind. Well, it's a, that's that's why we have this, right? And maybe he ha will have recourse. I, my guess is he'll get some sort of settlement out of it because. It just seems like it's so out of the ordinary. Well, he's had, a lot, of, he's had a lot of practice in court. He's been in court yeah, his whole he's life. He's a big litigator, too. <laughs> um, one more thing on this is the uh, the Kareem Abdul-Jabbar uh, 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 comments, which, you know, he <laughs> criticizes him for the comments, and he says he, you know, he shouldn't be in the league and, and everything else. But he goes down, a, I think, a really interesting route, which is, um, he says, and now the poor, the, the, the poor guy's girlfriend, undoubtedly ex-girlfriend, is on tape conjoling him into revealing his racism. What a winding road she led him down to get all of that out of him. She was like a sexy nanny playing pin the fried chicken on the Sambo. Again, this is Kareem Abdul-Jabbar saying this. She blindfolded him and spun him around and, and until he was just blathering all sorts of incoherent racist sound bites that had the news media peeing themselves with glee. They caught big game on a slow news day, they, so they put his head on a pike, dubbed him Lord of the Flies, and danced around him whooping. Wow. That's pretty solid. Yeah. But he, but he was for. He's yeah, definitely for the yeah, outcome. Yeah, he was still. Yeah, he goes. Shouldn't we be equally angered by the fact that his private, intimate conversation was taped and then leaked to the media? Didn't we just call to task the NSA for intruding into American citizens' privacy? Oh, wow, this is great American stuff. Life. Although the impact is similar. Yeah. Kareem said this? Yeah. Wow. Uh, he goes on and says, although the impact is similar to Mitt Romney's comments wow. that were secretly taped, the difference is that Romney was giving a public speech. The making and release of this tape is so sleazy that just listening to it makes me feel like an accomplice to the crime. We didn't steal the cake, but we're all gorging ourselves on it. Listen to this. Wow, Listen to that. Brilliant. We Brilliant. are so wow. screwed up as a nation right now. We, again, the plane is literally upside down. And down is up. Pull up. Boom. But th there's just no incentive to bring these things up. Like Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, a lot of credit there. Because, but there's no incentive to talk about that. Everything, if you fight on his side and say, "Wait a minute, all right," like I, I think he's a horrible guy, but what, what about this? You're a racist. You're everybody is. You're immediately called that. There's no incentive for anyone to even talk about what might be right or wrong. In this if case. you don't, you lose that. That's a muscle. If you don't stand in Nuremberg and say, "Wait, wait, wait, wait," yes, you're right. They're going to drag you out and call you a Jew lover. And then you probably will suffer the same fate as the Jew. Yeah. Good. Do it. In an unjust society, only the just men are being dragged out by society. Good. Good. Stand there. In the end, that's going to be the only thing that matters. You can have all your stuff. It's not going to be worth anything. You can have your job. It's not going to be worth anything. Be dragged out in the street if you have to. Only a just man in an unjust society is dragged out in the street. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and this opportunity to serve you. We thank you for the opportunity to be together in California. We pray for your guidance and direction. 
it's never been more important that we listen to you and let you guide the words that we speak and the, the emotions that we convey. We pray that you do just put it upon the hearts of those that, that have the ability to stand up, to do so, to, to be the difference maker, to be that voice that will help a nation really recover its way and see the light that, that they need to be following. We pray for your blessings. We pray for your patience as we move down the path that we think you want us to move down. We, we ask that you guide our every footstep and not let us step off your path. We thank you for the blessings. We thank you for the protection you provide. We just thank you for the miracles that we see every day in our lives and ask that we just use those to the fullest to spread your word. We pray all these things in your name. Amen. Amen.